Is it possible to still learn anything or even find the time to study even while you're on your clinical rotations or in the wards? Well, the answer is apparently yes. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Carl. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the three things you can do to make the most out of your time to learn and study even when you're on your clinical rotations and in the wards. So let's get into it. Tip number one is to always correlate textbook knowledge to clinical scenarios. Now, one of the main struggles when learning in the is the hospital noise and the less than ideal environment for studying. But these distractions shouldn't stop you from making the most out of your clinical rotations in the wards because these clinical experiences will be absolutely important when you become a full-fledged doctor treating real patients. And because here you will see firsthand all of the signs and symptoms of a disease as its course develops over time and what lab tests were requested by the resident or the attending and which ones are available in your hospital. And you also get to see what treatment was given to the patient and how he or she responds to it. So I would suggest well, when you see a patient in the wards, it's useful to spend some time, maybe five to 10 minutes to read in your textbook or up to date the clinical presentation of a specific disease and then correlate it with what's present in your patient, which led the resident or the consultant to come up with the patient's current diagnosis and the possible differentials and of course the treatment options for it. And making this conscious effort to be curious about how the theoretical knowledge you read in books compares to what you see in actual real life clinical situations will help you remember it much better. Because it is the clinical experience of talking with a patient, having a real person, a human being behind the disease with a voice and a story to tell. It just puts an emotional and more personal side to it. So for example, when you see a patient with chronic kidney disease who's undergoing hemodialysis in the wards, you should begin to ask yourself, what are the signs and symptoms I'm expecting to see in this patient? What are the lab tests that I should request for? And what are the expected findings for each of those tests? And eventually, by extension, what are the treatment options and how and why do they work for this specific patient? And having this sort of link between the clinical experience that that you will gather during your clerkship or your internship and the theoretical knowledge that you read from your textbooks will make your clinical years more enjoyable and more meaningful and will definitely make you remember more information for a longer period of time. Now, tip number two is to be proactive. Well, it just means to actively find opportunities in the wards and learn from your residents or consultants whenever they go on rounds. And this could just simply be taking the initiative and asking your residents about why a certain patient is on an anti pseudomonal antibiotic, for example. You could ask him or her about what risk factors are present in this patient to warrant this type of antibiotic. So just be curious enough to learn what you can during your clinical rotation. But this is not true, unfortunately, for all because there are some residents who are not inclined or interested in teaching medical students, and that's okay. So just figure out who among the set of residents or consultants are recognized as good teachers and tag along with them every time they are in the wards making rounds. And lastly is tip number three, which is to be intentional in setting aside time for self-studying. Now, unlike your first three years or so in med school, where there's a schedule or a sort of structure for when and what topics to study for an exam, which happens every week when you're in the wards or clinical rotations, there's no particular structure here. It's what they call self-directed learning. You just study or read on the patient cases that are assigned to you or those you're currently handling. So what I do is I make sure that that I will read upon my patient cases as soon as I get home or during short breaks or downtime. And we are trying to read on those patient cases instead of reading your textbooks, which you already did, hopefully, when you were in your med school, it's better to use resources that you can quickly use at the bedside and easily provide specific and practical information for diagnosis and treatment, such as up to date. Now, because it's evidence based, so you'll be more confident that the healthcare that you're providing is scientifically proven and, of course, well, up to date. But the subscription to this one is paid. But however, there are certain training hospitals that have an institutional subscription to this. So using the hospital's Wi-Fi, you can register or log into the app to be able to use it without having to pay for it. Now, another way to learn things that you will use in the wards is to listen to podcasts such as the Clinical Problem Solvers on Spotify or on YouTube to get simulated examples of how to approach a clinical scenario with a chief complaint and find out 
how expert clinicians reason their way into generating a list of differentials and coming up with a diagnosis. Because you will never be able to see all patient cases that will hopefully make you a competent physician, but listening to them on podcasts or watching them on YouTube will give you the familiarity to be able to manage those patient cases well if you happen to come across them in the future. Because by then, it will not be the first time you will hear or learn about it. Now, another bonus benefit of your clinical rotations is there's a chance you might discover your chosen clinical specialty that you want to get into in the future. So you might like to check out this video over here, which is a video I made about how to choose your residency program. If you got to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.